we have so many students that have reached out to us and said, I've never had viral content. And then I did a and it went viral and I got 50,000 views, a hundred thousand views, 500,000 views. And I'm like, you see how easy this is. That, that's all you got to do. This is Stay Paid, the marketing podcast that gives listeners a competitive edge to stay motivated, find inspiration, and discover proven real-world tactics from some of the best marketers across the nation. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Acri. And before we bring on our guest today, we'd love it if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you're not already subscribed. And while you're there, drop us a review. We'll read it here on the show. Today's featured review comes from, I'm not sure if it's Reese or Rice, but Reese S. says, highly recommended five stars, came across this podcast on YouTube and started listening. I needed help with marketing in my real estate business. This podcast has awesome nuggets, ideas, and overall tips for entrepreneurs entrepreneurs definitely would recommend so found us on youtube also awesome. we don't get too many comments on that so thank mm-hmm. you reese for listening and finding us our guest today is jeff fitzer jeff is a video and social media expert speaking of youtube as well as a regional vp at usa mortgage where his primary role is business development through coaching teaching and hosting events to bring value to the real estate industry he's co-founded multiple platforms including drunk on social business video school and real estate mastery pro joe has been named a top 30 video influencer across the u.s and canada and hosts both the lab code agents podcast and the social genius podcast jeff welcome to the podcast thanks for being here and I'm creating content as you were doing that. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> he did. If you're watching the YouTube video, you saw his phone. I up. look up and see yeah. the phone there. I was like, yeah. ah, okay. That's fantastic. This is a social guy. That's what we're talking about today. Jeff, man, <laughs> super excited to have you on. Got the chance to hear you speak. You were talking about the future of tech and where we're headed. And, um, you know, punchline, I'll give it to everybody. AI is going to take over the world, you know, so get ready. I'm just kidding. That is not what he said, but we want to talk to you and pick your brain about social media. Like you obviously are named a video influencer. You put out great content. You're coaching people on social all the time. We'd love to get your take on one of the things that I hear struggle for agents and businesses is what platform should they be on? And you think about like, they're ever changing. You got TikTok that's come onto this uh, scene. It's like the latest rage. Should people be producing uh, content on all the platforms? Should they choose one and go deep? What's your uh, thought process there? I want to digress real before I answer that and say, I don't believe that AI is going to replace us, but the humans that embrace AI will replace the humans that don't. So do take it extremely seriously. And it's coming in so damn fast that uh, you sh- don't wait and see. Jump in now because it's going to create massive advantages for your business. So just wanted to, wanted to say that. To answer your question, uh, let me let me go back to the beginning. The first question is which platform should you be on? You should you should be on the platform that you're most comfortable with. That's where you should be. Um, I, I, look, I don't remember if you if I said this on stage when you heard me speak, but I I so eloquently described Facebook as the retirement home of social media apps. <laughs> And, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but the reality is if I ask my 19 or 23 year old daughter about Facebook, they just roll their eyes. I'm like, yeah, the only reason I'm on Facebook is to see what you're doing, dad. <laughs> and, and so it's like the boomers that's, that's, it's, it's a boomer social app. However, it's also the app that has the most hundred thousand errors. So there is relevance there. It's Bingo. still, a, it's still the app that has the, the group feature, which is on no other platform. And so there's still a lot of relevance, but to answer the question, it's, it's ultimately, if you're going to take social serious, you're going to take it for your business, which you should, and that's probably what we're going to describe today is that you should start one place. Don't overwhelm yourself, create a foundation, build out a content library, build out a cadence, understand what you're doing and how you're doing it. And then once you have that, once that's established, then multiply it to other platforms, exactly what you're doing. Just multiply it. That's it. Do do you feel like um, sticking with Facebook for a second, and maybe this applies to all of them, like what's your view on organic versus paid? Because it feels like and stats, I think, show this. It's like you get very little organic reach on Facebook, especially if you do a business page. So maybe, you know, give your thoughts on business page versus personal profiles and organic versus paid, like boosting, I should say, when I'm referring to paid. So I will answer that by saying I almost never run ads. Okay. So I don't, I, I don't, I only do it to test it from time to time. I do it for added reach. I don't do it for leads. Uh, all of my success on social has been 100% organic. And, and so 
going forward to the question about business versus, so this is very, this is a specific answer to Facebook because this is not applicable to Instagram or anywhere else. Facebook has business pages and it has personal pages and it has groups. Now a business page is a relative graveyard. The only reason you really have a business page is to run ads or maybe to use it as your yellow pages because there are some people like humans have gravitated away. You know, we used to literally have a yellow pages and we would look businesses up in yellow pages. I did that. Uh, that's my age. I delivered actually yellow pages for a job once. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Right. And then, and then you had, then you, then Google took over and everything was, you got to have a Google presence. And now I feel like we're actually evolving away from Google into social. And I think the, uh, the the place that most people now go nowadays when they want to double check or stalk or look you up or look up your relevance, I think they gravitate to social. I do. If I get introduced to somebody, my first thing is to go see if I can find them on Instagram or Facebook and then do a little homework to, to learn about them before I even actually meet with them or it's talk so with true. them. Yeah. And, and I think that is going to become the norm in the near future, especially millennials and Gen Zers who are going to very soon control uh, everything in our world. They're going to be the ones that are consumers. And so I think having that social presence, so that to answer that question is the business page can serve as that. However, I think most people when they're searching are just going to be going into the general search bar. They're going to search your name and they're going to find your personal page. And so you know, just, just displaying who you want to display as yourself on your pages is what's most important, to be honest. Yeah, I think I saw a stat once, and maybe you can confirm that Facebook is like the fourth most searched on platform now or something. Like behind Google, behind YouTube, and I can't remember the number third. three. Oh, it is third? So there third, you go, number yeah. three, yeah. And it's that's 100% three. it. Like the value of your business page is legitimacy. It's when people look you up, you need to have a presence, you need to be there. What about some some of the other platforms? And obviously with Instagram being coming much more well-established, and of course we all know what TikTok's been doing the last few years. So my opinion on the platforms, if you if you're, if you ask me the question, all right, what would you say? If, you, if Let's just say I'm coaching one of you two guys or both of you, and you said, all right, I'm going to go all in, but I'm going to choose one platform as my foundational platform. My answer is Instagram. Okay. Uh, my answer is Instagram because for, for a couple of reasons. One, it talks to Facebook. Facebook owns Instagram. So you can kill two birds with one stone anytime you post to either one, right? But Instagram is far more innovative than Facebook. So it has the tools and the effects and the features like TikTok. Whether you like TikTok or not, TikTok is by far the most advanced social media app that has ever existed to this day. Mm. It is it is leading the is paving the way. It's 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 everybody's following it. Literally, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, everybody has copied a feature of TikTok. TikTok leads the way. And so as a creator, uh, is you're going to use social for your business to be the most advanced creator. You got to have the most advanced tools. Otherwise, the consumer is going to be able to tell, oh man, that's just like a, that's an antiquated Facebook post. And so I think making Instagram your foundational platform, which forces you to use the tools to create better content, then you automatically post it over to Facebook. And so now your content on Facebook is at a higher quality, a higher level, what the consumer expects, what they want. And so that that's my opinion is I would start on Instagram and that's very easy to multiply to TikTok, to multiply to YouTube, to wherever else you want to go. What do you think happened with the verification? Like, uh, should people get verified now, all businesses? Or do you think it, like, in my opinion, it, it kind of devalued it, right? A little bit, naturally. The check mark. Yeah, the, the check, check mark, mark devalued. Uh, yeah. um, so what, what's your feeling there? Yeah, I mean, the check mark is doesn't mean what it used to mean. And so now it, it, my answer is simply this. If you're going to take social serious and you're going to post often, then you're going to be very consistent, get the check mark. And not because of the check mark. That means nothing anymore. Uh, you're getting it for security hmm. because you're now going to get a higher level of service. You're pretty much being guaranteed that you're not going to get hacked or, well, I can't guarantee you're not going to get hacked because you click the wrong link. That's your own. That's on you. <laughs> but you're not going to get duplicated. Like, like it was very common. Somebody would type in Jeff Fitzer with, and they would add an extra I and you yep. didn't catch it. And you thought it was this, you know what I mean? Um, that's where it's protecting you. And honestly, ever since I bought it, I only bought it on Instagram, but I have had zero issues. You also get a higher level of service. Uh, historically, it was impossible to get through to Instagram or Facebook when you had a problem. Now, 
it's within minutes. Really? And yeah. Wow. It's, okay. It's, Okay, it's I'm really going to have to buy so, it. I was I was debating. I was like, oh, man, am I, got gonna, it I haven't got it yet. Yeah, I know we got it for our, podcast, it for our podcast channel, yeah. but but I didn't get it for myself. 15 bucks a month, yeah. babe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why you get it. That's why you get it. The check yeah. mark, like I said, doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. Um, so, but you have to get it individually. You have to get it for Instagram. You have to get it for Facebook. You have to get yep. it for Twitter. You have to get them for each individual platform. So all of a sudden, it could become 50 bucks a month. So uh, diving deeper on Instagram, are you recommending um, Reels as what people should focus on? I know, um, you know, carousels have come back pretty strong recently. <laughs> we did a podcast recently on that. Um, what are you recommending people post and what's your cadence that you, I know everybody does something a little different, but what's your recommended cadence? Yeah, I live on in two places, reels and stories. Okay. Um, I, I know what, when someone says uh, images are coming back, that's because Adam Masseri, the, the, the president right. of Instagram, said it. I also think he's full of crap. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know if I can cuss why, here. Why, so. why, do you, why do you say that? Why do you say he's full of crap? Because when they said, when Instagram said they were going all in on video, they got a ton of backlash from Kardashian type people. And I think they had to take a step back and realize, well, we don't want to piss everybody off and send them off to other apps. So let's tell them what they want to hear. That's what I think. Um, I don't think that anything's changing with the future of, of where media is going. And, and again, using TikTok is, is kind of that, that, that platform that we're looking up to. There's a reason why TikTok doesn't do static posts mm. because video is what people want. It's video, you know, social media is television, what television was 10 years ago. You know, we, we would get home from work, we'd sit down on the couch, we would make dinner, get our kids settled, sit down on the couch, watch two to three hours of television shows. Like we had a cadence, Seinfeld's on Thursday and so-and-so's on, on Wednesday. And so, you know what I mean? I now, like how you chose Seinfeld because I'm a big fan of Seinfeld too. You, you couldn't remember same. the other shows. You were like, <laughs> and so-and-so's on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Friends yeah. came on at nine. <laughs> but, but that's what it was. And now what do we do? We spend two to three hours a day just watching watching TikTok, watching yeah. YouTube, scrolling Instagram. That's what we do. And, but don't um, you think humans I, I, are like, uh, like as more and more video will be there, people will crave seeing an image of somebody. Like, like you know, it's like style always comes back around. Like, I don't know if Bell Bottoms je jeans ever really fully came back, but like style comes back around. It's like, don't you think there's a little bit of like, you jump on the train for a while, then you get bored of it and, and something else comes in that it now seems new, even though it was old? I think there, I, I think, you know, going back to the original question is I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily advocate for it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't diminish it either. I wouldn't make it your primary focus. Gotcha. Um, so if you have a posting cadence, I, you know, of five days a week, I'd maybe build in one or two a week tops. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily hurt. You know, and, and carousel posts, you know, people do like it if because it's like telling a story. Right. And so now you watch, you see that first slide and you got to scroll. Okay. There's, it's teasing you to keep going. Right. And I think that is, I think there is some importance to that specifically on Instagram. Uh, I wouldn't kill yourself. Uh, well, I think reels are still the best performing yeah. uh, place on Instagram. And then, and then my argument for stories is this, where do stories show up on Instagram and Facebook? Right at there the at the top, yeah. Right there at the top. And and if you don't, and your stories only last for 24 hours. So you won't have a story bubble if you don't have anything within the last 24 hours. And the more recent that you've posted, the more the greater the likelihood that your bubble is going to show up on their screen when they open up the, 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 the app. So the way I describe stories are is they are a vomit of your life. Like there's nothing you can't share. If you just want to share the, what you're eating for breakfast every day, that's perfectly okay. And actually probably will get more engagement than anything you ever put out for your business. <laughs> but the, the point is, is it's a digital billboard. Why did, why have so many of us in, in, especially in real estate bought billboards, not because it was going to magically grow our business tomorrow. We bought a billboard because we just wanted to stay top of mind. When everybody drove down a road, they, yep. they th saw me. That's what your story is. It's a digital billboard. Every time I open up Instagram or Facebook, I want to increase the likelihood that somebody sees Jeff Fitzer subliminal. Yeah. You can't get rid of me. I'm always there. And then there are some people that live in their stories and love to follow along with your life. And then there's other people that live on their feed, but they're still seeing the story every time they open up the app. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I would argue that stories are just as important as anything because of where it shows up on the page. 
And I, th- and I think that's, that's Facebook or Instagram subliminal way of saying this is still very, very important because we put it at the top. Mm. What about the type of reels? Because I know some people are saying, you know, kind of this whole trend towards trending audios and copying the audio. And now, now people are saying, no, it's all about original content because Instagram is mm. going to favor that. Do you have an opinion there? Like what type of content should people be focused on? I mean, original content is always going to be best, but original content is hard for the average person creatively to come up with something every day or every week. And so a good mix. I do. If you, if you look at mine, it's, it's a really good mix of, I, I do plenty of trending stuff, but I do a lot of my own original stuff. And then I do a lot of personal authentic stuff. So it's, it's uh, and then I do, re, you know, like perfect example of what you just said, Josh was, was, you know, original content, but yet they, they offer this remix feature or duet feature. Mm-hmm. And usually if you do, if you use remix or duetting, you are the likelihood of you having a viral post is much greater on a remix or duet than it really? is on an original post. I have seen so many remix. So remix is where you show the beginning of a clip and then it switches to your point of view. No, reverse. that's stitching. Oh, that's the, okay. That's stitching. D- remixing is where you put yourself side by side. You don't even say anything. It's the easiest video to create. It plays there. So let's just say, Luke, you have a video. I love it. You, the message was profound. It was awesome. Sure. I just, I, press remix. I put ourselves side by side, your video plays and I just react to you. And I just sit there and shake my head and point and be, Oh yeah, that's it. You can't even hear what I say. And, and this is the opportunity. The reason why a lot of this stuff goes viral is because you can remix famous people, which is what most people do. And, and I always tell people, I'm like, go find content that's on point with what your brand is and just remix it. That's such a golden nugget. Yeah. That's yeah. It's so easy to do. And I'm telling you, I have, we have so many students that have reached out to us and said, I've never had viral content. And then I did a remix and it went viral and I got 50,000 views, a hundred thousand views, 500,000 views. And I'm like, you see how easy this is? That that's all you got to do. Yeah. That's so good. So, you know, a lot of people when they uh, obviously are doing social, they're building their brand and they want to generate leads. Um, how do you translate the relationships you're building on social to try to get hand raisers? Like, is there any things that you have found, whether it's using polls or like uh, DMing people? Is there any strategies that you have seen worked and maybe not, but like to get hand raisers from your social following? You know, it's, it's using the tools that drive the engagement. I mean, you know, in an ideal world, you're creating content that causes people to comment, which allows you to comment back. And in some cases can lead into multiple comments or even move over to DMS. I like using the new notes feature on Instagram because it's where you can just share a thought. It only lasts for, it's the same thing as a story. It's like the last 24 hours. I've had more conversations because of notes than ever in Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you can have you to explain have a creator. notes for people that might not know of this feature? Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a, you have to have the right account. Okay. So kind of like what we were talking about on Facebook on Instagram, there's three types of account, personal business or creator slash professional, same thing. Some people call it, so, some people's accounts will call it creator. Some will call it professional. It's the same thing. So if you, if you don't have that account, you want to get one, you don't need personal, you don't need business. It doesn't matter on Instagram. In fact, there's, you're lacking features. If you have either one of those versus the creator professional account, one of those features is notes. And so you won't even have access to notes. If you don't even know what notes are, if you go to your DMS on Instagram, it would be above the DMS mm-hmm. and it's, it's, it's probably most prevalent in the real estate community because real estate is just one of the leaders of the pack uh, of all industries and innovative technology because it's just a bunch of individual entrepreneurs ultimately. And that's, yeah. and so it's very competitive. Um, and so, yeah, that's notes is a great feature. Uh, I live in my notifications, man, every day. There's not a day that goes by that. I don't, I'm not checking my notifications. I'm not going to leave one comment untouched. Mm. Like that's gold. And so, you know, to, to, to answer your question, you know, it's, it's ultimately it's creating content that's going to drive engagement, maybe asking a question, maybe saying something controversial, uh, you know, uh, th- th- unfortunately, or fortunately, that is kind of the name of the game. The name of the game is to, is to create content that's going to spark conversation. And um, yeah, I, I honestly, and it, I guess to add to it, I'm finding that more and more people prefer to communicate through DM than text message. Like, like phone calls are like 
for my grandparents at this point. <laughs> I mean, that's, it, it's just like true. Like I, I don't, and, I, and I'm, I'm a Gen Xer that that's like a wannabe Gen, millennial or Gen Z just based on my technological, you know, involvement. I can't stand answering the phone. You call me, even if I, if I don't know you, if you're not in my phone, I'm definitely not answering. If you're in my phone, odds are I'm going to text you and say, Hey, I'll call you back. Or I try to move it to text. And now I'm finding that most of my, even like probably 50% of my conversations, people don't even, t I'll tell people, cause I guess I'm antiquated in that regard. Text is best for me, but some people just continue to DM me, Facebook message, Instagram. And I'm like, damn it. I guess that's just how they want to communicate. And so you, you as a business owner, you have to start embracing this stuff because if you don't meet your customer where they want to be met, you lost them. And I, and I will say, I, I notice it with, with consumers and, and referral partners and people will shoot me a DM and then I'll respond immediately. And then I don't hear from them for days, weeks, or maybe ever. And I know why, because they're not, the muscle memory hasn't been created yet to check DMs. Mm. And you as a you is just a, an evolution of our society. You've got to start making that a muscle memory of checking your DMs because the future of our world that's how they want to communicate. You, I don't know about either one of you guys, but I've got you know I've got a 19 and 23 year old, and they've told me, Dad, the only reason we text is for you and mom and you know like like <laughs> that's, those people. That's we snap. crazy. Those yeah. people. They snap. Yeah, Snapchat, yeah, that's that's, that's it. That's it. Snap is text yep. to that to that generation, and so it's. It's, it's like that. I must be them. older than I thought because I, I I try and drive towards the call. Like, do you really? A phone call is so much more yeah. <laughs> economical. It you not, get it all done in one shot. You don't have to it go is. back and forth. Well, there's forth. this new social. Well, is, is. I think it's called Real, and not that oh, yeah. could be confused with the real estate brokerage, but it's like Real or something mm. like that. Real, be real. Be real. Be real. That's real. what it is. Yeah. And I was home <laughs> my for my brother just signed up for that yeah, one so, over the weekend. Dude, I was home for a vacation, and my wife's little sister, who's much younger was explaining it to me and I was like, oh my gosh. So literally everybody at the same time gets this notification to post on social, whatever they're doing. And they all have to snap a picture at that moment. And it literally tells your audience, whether you actually snapped it, whether you took it multiple times, you know, did you do anything to the photo? Like it, it's supposed to just make it super real. I was like, wow, where the, where the world is headed. Crazy, crazy, man. Well, so, and if I can teach you guys a little bit, be real is like yesterday's a social app. There you go. It was the most, it was the most downloaded app in 2022 and it's fall. It's fallen off the map all, all, already. Um, so we, yeah, we, uh, Tristan and I got on it probably at the, at the uh, probably the beginning of 22. Okay. Because we're, we're, we, you know, this is part of our job. We're studying this stuff and, um, I'm studying it to see if I can use it for my business. Okay. And, uh, it had, it had great intentions, but, it's not so the design of it was that you get a notification you can only post once a day and you get a three minute window or so they said you get a notification that you've got three minutes to go post not true what could so the idea was you can't prep this stuff you yep. can't go put on your makeup you can't filter it well what it ended up being was is you get that notification but if you ignore it you can go back in six hours later and post whatever <laughs> you want um, now it's limited. It doesn't have all the features and the filters. And that was the idea. It's a great idea. Uh, but as it turns out, it kind of fell off the map. And now we're talking about, um, this, the, the one this year that we're looking at is called lemon eight. Lemonade. So it sounds okay. like lemonade, but it's lemon, the word lemon with the number eight. And it's, it, uh, if you look at it, it, it looks like Instagram met Pinterest. Interesting. Like. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's, I just did a video on six of the best, up and coming apps. I don't know that any of them will overtake TikTok right now. TikTok's still the leader in the, in the clubhouse and I don't see that changing. It will eventually, but right now TikTok's the leader as far as innovation. We had um, Tamara Thompson on. She was talking about Clapper. Is that is that one of the the ones you were looking at or not really? It was not on my list. On I, list. Okay. I took a list of twenty and narrowed it down to six, and Clapper okay. wasn't even on the top Just twenty. Okay. okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's it tells you with Be Real, right? That there's a craving. I can understand totally. It makes total sense to me after she, uh, my sister-in-law explained it to me, and then now you're telling me it didn't take off. There's a craving for authentic content. That's really what that message is there. I'm not yes. surprised at all that the app fell down because of this. The you know 
how it works, but authentic content is where it's at. And and you see yeah. this, like the thing that drives me up a wall with real estate agents, um, not to pick on you guys, but I'm going to pick on you a little bit, is going to a real estate agent's feed that friends me. And it is listing photos <laughs> all the way down. And then there's a, a headshot picture of them or a picture of their family. And uh, no joke, test this. You click on the family photo, the headshot photo, 60, 70 likes. You click on the listing photos, two likes. Two. And you're just like, guys, guys, they, like, can't you see? It's literally right there in the data. And it's just still people don't wake up. That It's like people want the raw, real content. And, and the very basic is just a picture of you. Like people yeah. actually want that. Um, and it's just weird how people still don't get well, it. Where can people go to like people that may be sitting here? Well, I'm not creative. I can't come up with ideas. Where can they go to get inspiration or ideas then? Well, so I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you guys brought this up because when you think about the psychology of social media, and this is where a lot of people miss the boat, especially in real estate. In fact, I will say this because I pick on real estate all the time because I'm in the industry. I always tell people, I'm like, if I give, if I tell you to describe in one word, what is a used car salesman? The most common word is going to be slimy. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go ask a 25 year old who has no ties to real estate in one word, describe a real estate agent. The word's probably going to be slimy mm. and I know they don't want to hear it, but that's because we have created that through social media because who decided that it was a good idea to take a picture with our clients at closing and post it to social media. If anybody should do that, it's doctors. Like they just saved your life. <laughs> that's social media worthy. We don't deserve that, but who decided it was a good idea? Somebody did. And then we all copycatted them, right? And that's what we do. And then somebody decided that we thought that, that the world is interested in Monday market updates. They're not, I'm not even interested and I'm in the industry. <laughs> and, and so understand the psychology of social. If you're a real estate agent, when you open up social, the algorithm knows what you are and who you are and it shows you real estate. But your neighbor, who's a teacher, and, and the, the wife's a teacher and the husband works in corporate America. When they open up social, they see French bulldog, they see golfing, they see gardening. They don't see what you see. And they go to social media, not because they want to be sold. The same reason why we hated spamming phone calls. And all of a sudden this do not call list became a big thing. And now we basically don't receive them anymore. Why? Because the world said, leave me alone. And what do you think the world thinks when they open up social and you're constantly cramming your business down their throat? That's self-serving. You're not serving them. They're there for entertainment. They're there for education. They're there. And, and by the way, education doesn't mean Monday market updates. They're not interested in that. They're there for tips on how to grow the most robust toma tomato, the, the tips for how to, to the, the breakfast shake. I mean, that's what they're interested in. Right. And so give them what they want. So, so back to your question, Josh, you're right. Most people aren't creative. And so what you need to do, what you need to understand is when people open up social, they want relatable content back to what you said, Luke, they, they, they want authenticity. Even you, if you've noticed like shows like the Kardashians have kind of died off. And I think the reason why that is, is because there was, a, we went through a, a lull where we wanted to live vicariously through super wealthy, lavish lifestyle people. Now these younger generations are saying, screw perfection. Mm. Somebody even wrote a song making fun of Victoria's Secret saying it's a joke and basically saying that we are now an accepting society of all sizes and shapes and colors and, and sexuality, all this stuff, right? It's actually gone too far in my opinion, but that's where we are, right? And so authenticity absolutely wins. And so when you're thinking about creativity, you don't have to be creative document. Like I have a bird feeder right outside my window. Sometimes I see a cool bird or I see birds doing something. I snap a picture and I post it to my stories. That's it. Guess what? Bird lovers. That resonates with them. They connect with me over it. There's, Dude, there's, that could not have been better time. Yeah, perfect time. Speaking timing. of authentic, yeah. my dog just walked his, in. His yes. dog literally <laughs> just opened his door and walked in. Yeah. It was funny because the door was opening and I didn't see a person, so yeah. I was a little bit concerned yeah, there for like, a second. Oh, there's a ghost. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. I can back up what you're saying, though. Like, we've been at this in Reminder Media for, for 20 years right now. Yeah. About 100,000 businesses we've helped in 142 <laughs> different industries. And we produce content. We always call it relational, not transactional. 
And the number one question we get from prospects all the time, I don't understand. Why aren't you just giving me content that's about real estate? And it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. People don't want to read about real estate all the time. Or, hey, financial advisors, why isn't it just about the market? People don't care about finances 24-7 like you do. And if you meet people yeah. in the 99% of life that they live and not the 1% that they actually need your service, you'll actually get them when they need your service. And you it's know. just such a hard concept for people to get because it's not instant gratification. And it feels very much like I'm just giving everything away. I'm just ne I'm never prospecting. I'm never closing. It's like relationships equal revenue. If you just focus on just, and Gary Vee wrote the book on it, Give, Give, Give. Give, give, yeah. give, and you'll get the business. So I, I think yeah, you're spot yeah, on. Yeah. We've seen it in our 20 years. It's been kind of crazy. And we still, to this day, have to convince people of that philosophy. It, it's, it's it's a long game. And I, I get into this argument. I say argument all the time with people. But, they'll, you know, they'll talk about, you know, let's talk about, like, buying Zillow leads for the real estate world or just buying leads in general. And they act like that's a better avenue. First of all, it costs a hell of a lot more money. Second of all, we all know you got to call 100 leads to get one conversation that might turn into a deal six to 24 months down the road. Like it's that's it's the same thing as social, except social is potentially free. It's completely organic. You're going to create f way stronger connections and parasocial relationships with people. And yeah, it's not going to be overnight. It can be like I've seen people like. Jeff, I'm going to follow your advice and I'm going to do it. And they'll call me two weeks later and be like, I got a lead. And I'm like, it doesn't always work that way. So don't expect it to be that way, but that's awesome. Right. But it's, it's, uh, it's attraction marketing. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that my, my life has completely changed in the sense that I, in fact, in almost in an arrogant way, I will tell people, I don't chase you. Like if, if you're a lead that somebody turns over to me, you, you came to me because you were attracted to me. If I feel like I have to chase you, I'm not going to bother because I don't need to, because I know I've got enough business that's going to come to me just organically and naturally from my efforts through social that I don't have to chase you. Mm. And so I don't mean it in an arrogant way. I just mean, I found my niche. It works really, really well. The people that come to me are already sold, done. It's over with. And so I don't really have a need to necessarily chase after you. And I think if you asked any business owner, if you could build that, you, you get a hundred percent adoption. 100%. The problem is the process to get there is hard. Yeah. Cause it's so. relationship building and relationships exactly. take time and take yeah. consistency. Exactly. It's, we always tell people, it's like the majority of your business should be relationships. Call it your sphere, call it referral business, repeat business, uh, but it should be relationships. Then when you've mastered that, which will just set you on a path for just living the life you want to live, then you want to keep growing your business, then add a secondary model, which could yeah. be leads. Then add a tertiary model, which could be yeah. something like open houses or farming or something like that. Yeah. But if you first want to build a business, focus on building your brand to your community that matters. And yeah. if you, it, and just people just don't do it because they literally get commission breath and it's, it's crazy. Hey, tell them about your coaching, man, because I, I could talk to you all day and pick your brain on secrets. What, what do you offer coaching wise for social? Yeah. So we, uh, we have a group coaching and, and what it is, is, is basically a, a group of people. And by a group, I mean, several hundred that, uh, just join us on, we do, we have two calls a month. Usually we'll throw in an extra one every once in a while with some influencer because we're connected to a lot of cool people and uh, we'll just do random calls every once in a while. But basically what it is, is we're just going over topics that are relevant. So we're just talking about Tristan and I, we're the ones aggregating and, and reading the news. What's happening? What's the latest, what's the latest trend? What's the latest tool? And then we just talk about it. We teach it. We're, we do things like don't know how to use the green screen or the remix feature. Cool. We're going to log on with our phone and actually show you how to push the button. Oh, that's sweet. Um, we, we, and we, and we cover it all. So actually the reason why we did, we created drunk on social to, to give you guys the quick story was in 2020, uh, TikTok was still relatively new. I was introduced to TikTok in early 2019 by my, at the time, she's tw she's 19 now. So, you know, however, however many years ago, that was four years ago. So she was 15 and, and I didn't take it very serious. And it took me about six months to say, I think there's some relevance here. I can see how I can use this in real estate. And then I embraced it. And I was about a year late still before most of the world, yeah, but I was crazy. like, damn it. Why didn't I know about this sooner? And so we started to kind of analyze it and say, what platforms are out there that we can follow that will guide us and tell us when the next 
platforms coming. Nothing existed. There's specialists on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, but there was nobody covering it all. So we're like, you know what? Selfishly, let's just create it for ourselves. And um, and maybe, maybe it'll turn this up and maybe it won't, but if nothing else, we'll stay ahead. And so now we are talking about the apps like I just did with you guys that nobody even has heard of yet because most of it will never turn out to be anything, but I don't want to miss out the next time the next TikTok comes around. Yeah. And so I want to be ahead of the game. And so it's just an aggregator. And so the coaching is just a deeper version of that. So we offer a ton for free just in our drunk on social. Uh, our, we have a Were newsletter. Were you drinking we when website. you came up we with have... the name? Were you drinking when you came up with the name? <laughs> no, actually, the funny thing is Tristan came up with the name and he doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> funny story. And, and actually, if you look up the word, if you look up the word uh, drunk in the dictionary, uh, we, as as I think a society, just associate it with drinking alcohol, but it actually there is there is a um, there is a, a definition, and I don't I don't have it off the top of my head, but something to the effect of like really passionate about something, yeah. or yeah, it's 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 um, really? it actually has a, a different different meaning than what we all. I That's why the it. Bible says, "Be drunk on the spirit." That's what it says. Really? Yeah, it does. Yeah, don't be drunk on wine. Be drunk on the spirit. That's okay. And I don't think I don't think they were referencing alcohol yeah, when they yeah. said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So Jeff. that to answer your question, that's what it is. And so it's it's just it's like an insider group. So we're we're putting out like overviews of everything. But if you really want to go deep on something, then you just got to join and get in the inside. And and that's what we uh, that's what we do. Where that's can awesome. they go to find it? Drunkonsocial.com. Com. Cool. And if if you're interested in hiring us, you just go to the hire us. We actually do some other things. We do some editing and we do some actual one on one coaching. But uh, to be honest, most of our people are in the group coaching because a lot of them are DIYers. It's like I don't have the budget to pay for editors and all this stuff. I want to learn how to do it myself. I'll do it myself. And those are the people that are in there. And then nice. occasionally we get somebody that says, can I just pay you to do it? And then we say, sure. Nice. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for coming on the podcast, Jeff. Before we close out, let people know how they can connect with you. Obviously, they can hit you up on Drunk on Social, but uh, your Instagram and everything? Everywhere. Uh, Jeff Fitzer, very easy to find, just my name. Um, I'm on every platform. You can find me as my name. The only platform that has really uh, been has gone down a different path is TikTok. It actually is driving the most business for me too. And it's a geo strategy. So it's, you can find me by Jeff Fitzer, but it's also called Lake of the Ozarks lifestyle. Oh, cool. And, uh, and so I, I'm, I'm basically like the local authority on the lifestyle of living in this geographic area. And dude, it's driving that is leads. Awesome. It's driving opportunities out the wazoo. I've got people hiring me. I'm getting sent. I mean, just yesterday, if you go look at it, I just, I'm, I'm now in the knife, knife of the month club. And this, <laughs> they said, Hey, can we send you knives and will you create content for us? That's and so now sick. I'm going to get knives every single it's just stuff I didn't even ask for, but it's kind of fun when you do this kind of stuff. I have more lake related products and now I'm actually getting paid to promote it's a true influencer. It's crazy. I get asked me a year ago. I would have said you're high. Like, what, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. That is crazy. Yeah. You might be promoting that stuff soon, man. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That'd be fun. <laughs> that, All right, it Jeff. reminds me of Shannon Gillette, just um, the lifestyle. Like, I want to point that out. Lifestyle-based content, because she came on and talked about that, and she's lifestyle blown first, up on yeah. YouTube. Lifestyle first. Yeah. Is Who's that? Uh, Shannon Gillette. If you're not familiar with her, man, look her up. She does yep. killer a killer job on Instagram, and then YouTube she does. Uh, incredible. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks again, Jeff. And thank you all so much for listening. You can dive deeper to this episode, get those links that we mentioned all together over at staypaidpodcast.com, as well as the show notes in the video of this episode. Make sure to check it out. Not only does Jeff have a cool background, but you get to see his puppy walk through. So that's always fun. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode and want to show your support, uh, head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review along with a comment. We'll read it here on the show. And the best way to show your support is to simply share this episode with a friend or a colleague. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can also email us at podcast at remindermedia.com and of course you can find us on instagram as well we are at stay paid podcast for this episode of stay paid i'm joshua stike guys i'm luke acre thank you so much for listening guys you gotta apply what jeff is talking about here and you guys hear us talk about all the time with this podcast right it's we want to give you action items that you can implement i'm going to give you an action item that i know you can do is you need to be posting stories on your instagram and you need to take advantage of that billboard that is in 
people's phones right now for you to take advantage of. And it's super simple. And if you follow the advice, you don't have to, po- you can post anything. It can be your breakfast, can be your animals, can be you driving to work. You can post anything. But most of us where we fail is we just don't take action. So get out there, start posting, get in the homes and the phones of all of your community to build that brand. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every single business is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 